So good morning, everyone. My name is Asael, and today I will be presenting to you my final defense for my senior capstone project. My capstone is titled uh, Convertive Analysis of Existing Schools in Riyadh, uh, Saudi Arabia, and the best uh, autism centers around the world. First, I would like to introduce my committee members, Mary Golding, our interior design uh, director at RIT, Corny uh, Dervelti, she's an interior designer at Clark Patterson Lee, and Rachel Rosner, a director of education uh, and support at Autism Up. Thank you all for all your support and help. So the problem is education, educational provision in Saudi Arabia and the educational placement in public schools are still not able to include these students because of poor training. Therefore, autistic students are being referred to centers for those with severe learning difficulties, regardless of their intellectual ability or their needs. In addition, students with high functional autism often remain undiagnosed because teachers are unable to recognize their symptoms of autism. Here is a comparative analysis between two autistic classrooms, one of them in Saudi Arabia and the other one in the United States. Both classrooms have almost the same color palette, but not both are autism-friendly design. Choosing the, the right color schemes is very important to designing autism-friendly space. On the left picture, there are too many colors in a small space, which could make children with autism uncomfortable because it's distracting them. Throughout my research, I have decided to focus on these three key points in designing autism spaces, sensory integration, light, uh, lighting and colors, and materials. Sensory integration is important to design because some individuals with autism have sensory sensitivity to some stimulation, which may make schools a scary place for them. When it comes to lighting and colors, children with autism can be stimulated by, color, uh, by light and vibrant colors. Throughout my research, I have found that utilizing muted and bright colors will support these places. Natural materials are, uh, and easily sanitized finishes are important because some people on the autism spectrum can have an almost conclusive need uh, for cleanliness. For my research agenda, I use different modules to develop my thesis and further support my, my topic and further, uh, further support my thesis, survey, case study, and interview. For the survey report, I, com I composed a list of 10 questions that was uh, distributed to 10 people, and here are some of the results. Here's some percentage on the survey report. These are three types of people that took the survey. I selected parent of autism because they have a unique perspective on their own child, as well as uh, how they, uh, how, how those uh, children inter interact with other children. And teacher, because they also have a unique perspective and being educators in these environments and recognizing what a good design could support them. And people who have awareness of autism because they understand how, understand how good design in this environment could help uh, autistic children. So one of the question was, right from one to five, what is the most uh, to least important factor when working with a child with autism spectrum uh, design? Uh, autistic children based on sensory system. So about 57% uh, of the answers say sensory system is the most important factor when working with autism or with autistic children. About 14% answer indicated that were only some uh, somewhat important and most of the responses who answer most important, important were teachers 
it was very important information to know because it's related to the main idea of the project. And another question was, do changes in routine or transition to new activities affect your child's routine? If yes, what types of classroom accommodation could help the child adapt to change and transition? All the answers agreed that changes in routine or, transi or transition in new activities affect the child's behavior. The classroom uh, accommodation listed were classroom that contain different forms of events, uh, advanced uh, warning routine established of each transition, visual and, and priming activities, storyboard, and clean transition time. I had an opportunity to visit Autism Up and do a case study. Autism Up is a parent-led autism support organization in Greater Rochester and the surrounding areas. Its mission is to, exp it's to expand and enhance opportunity to improve quality of life for individuals of all ages and abilities with autism and their families. First thing I, that I'm going to talk about is the flooring. The overall design concept for the flooring and buttering uses different colors of the puzzle piece. Images uh, at the entrance of the classroom, which correspond directly to the color of the classroom. This wayfinding allows the children to find and identify their classroom easily. Another way that flooring was used to designate space was the selection of different carpet carpet uh, tiles at the entry points. For instance, purple for the sensory room, yellow for the medical clinic, and blue for the main areas. Another thing is lighting and colors because the use of colors is quite important uh, in designing the immediate environment of children with autism. All furniture and material colors utilizing an autism app are very natural and muted colors. Muted colors with white and gray undertones have calming effect on children uh, in this spectrum. More for cool colors, such as blue and green, also have calming and smoothing effect. All classrooms have large windows for natural lighting, which is a very important element to have an autistic, have an autistic learning environment. For the, for the interview, I interviewed Carly Ozerzak, an interior designer at Clark Patterson Lee, who has over 10 years of experience designing a diverse range of interior environment for healthcare, education, municipal, community, and historical preservation project. She worked with Clark Patterson Lee to design a cohesive and beneficial environment for Levine Autism Clinic. She also worked clo closely with Rock Paper Square Company, who specialized in autism design, to gain greater perspective on, on the need of this specialized env environment. I started my interview by asking her about her experience in designing the Levine Autism Clinic at the University of Rochester. She explained that uh, the center is a full suite that includes exam room, therapy room, and sensory room. When children come in, they are interactive. They are, there is interactive reception area that uh, will rock them to the waiting room. For the child who has more extreme autism, the sensory room is available for adjacent to the waiting room. The sensory room included a bubble tube, like a big pipe with LED lights and colored water bubbles that move up and down. This creates visual stimuli for, this, for the child. In addition, in addition, the sensory room has tactile toys and ramps that younger kids can climb on with support uh, the physical and mental stimuli needed for these with autism. 
She also talked about the exam room, which is a typical exam room would normally find in the doctor's office. However, they have a different warm colors and wall graphic with a different air balloon themes uh, for children to look uh, at while they are waiting for the session. This again supports the, the visual stimula, stimulus needs and may help reduce anxiety while waiting for, the, for, a, for a therapy doctor's appointment to begin. As previously mentioned, wayfinding can be a very important tool in these types of environments. Carly discussed this when describing the long corridor that takes the children from the waiting room to the exam or therapy room. When the autistic child walks throughout this corridor, she or he may feel overwhelmed. And there are the few conditions in the, in the corridor that were addressed during the design process to help remove this potential feeling. Where they have two corridors intera intera interacting and where one would need to make a turn, Carly and her team designed a ceiling element of blue cloud and a flooring element of green leaves to indicate to the child that this is interaction between two corridors. This design feature allows the staff to able to give clear directions and allows the child and the parent to find their way while providing visual interest. Additionally, within these corridors, there are several art walls, for instance, birds and different kinds of trees. This also support the visual interest and stimuli while, uh, while they, are, they are walking to their destination. The last thing that Kelly mentioned about the corridors is the dark blue bench, which is recessed into the wall. The bench is uh, intent used when the autistic child does get overwhelmed with the larger spaces. She or he may feel like there is too many things going on around them to move on, to move on. And so they can sit and stretch and on the dark bench and close the space to make them feel safer and not feel so exposed for stimulated. So the aim of the clinic's design is treating patients, uh, patients with autism, mental illness and neurogenesis. Neural, neural, neurological disease. Uh, the building was designed with a sensory experience in mind. Bright, vibrant colors, specialized light, lighting allow, allowing patients uh, a chance to become more comfortable with their surroundings and less stressed when visiting the doctors. One other aspect of the interview was the choosing colors for the clinic. Carly said, we didn't do primary colors. All the colors that we picked are still elementary, but they were muted fashioned. So they didn't utilize any bold colors like red because it could, it could be very bright for autistic children. They wanted to utilize bright colors like to colors to make everyone comfortable, especially autistic children in this space. And coming to the creative agenda, this is my mood part. It's kind of explain the theme and the colors that I want to design in this space. My inspiration for the floor plan uh, layout is a puzzle, puzzle piece, which is a sample for the autism awareness. And this is the first sketch that I came up with and the spaces that I consider to design in the school. And this is the actual floor plan layout. This, the actual floor plan layout. The school includes eight classrooms and each classroom fits from 10 to 15 students. Also, each classroom has a private bathroom. It also includes a sensory room, gym, and open space between each two class, which makes the classes uh, get and play together while the break. Also, there is another open space in the middle of the school to bring natural light to the space. 
This is the first view I will start with as the reception desk. As you can see, I used a wall covering that has many colors, but they are still bright and muted colors. And the reason that I decided to do that is to make the space feel more welcoming. Also to support the visual interest. And I have decided a small board for the sensory integration for the kids to play with while their parents talk into the reception desk. The second view is the classroom. Based on my research, I have chosen bright colors in the classrooms and all the elements are made of natural materials and they are easily sanitized. The chairs have a, te a texture which support the sensory integration for children with autism. There are a big windows as well to bring more additional light. And this is another view of the classroom. I made this space for children to sit or play on. And the building shape decoration are made to hang their work or they could uh, put hooks to hang their jacket or their backpack. For the wayfinding, when the children enter the school, there are many different colors on the floor and each color is linked to the specific classroom. So they can define their classroom by the color. And here is a rendering to show how the wayfinding looks like. Also, each door matches the color on the floor. In the corridor, I did a sensory stimulation wall that has many different shapes of trees. And each tree has a different material such as artificial grass, mirror, glass, wood, metal, and bait to keep the children interested while they're walking in the corridor. Also support the visual interest and stimulate while they're going, while they're walking to their destination. And this is how it looks like in 3D view. This is the sensory room. It's meant to be a calming space since they have other places to play in so they can hide and read books. And this, um, uh, I would say cove, and then they can come down by stairs or the slide. So basically this undergraduate capstone thesis is focusing on creating and designing an appropriate school for autistic children. And there are only a few schools in Riyadh with autism friendly design. So there, therefore, the capstone project aims to design an autism-friendly school by utilizing muted colors, bringing in additional light, and designing many sensory integration areas. Here all my bibliography. And now I would like to open the floor for any questions and comments. Thank you, Afia. So Dr. Kai, we'll open the floor with you, please. All right, thank you, Mary. Um, thank you, uh, uh, Asayo, did I pronounce your name correctly? Uh, great job there. Uh, this is such an important topic uh, and uh, the environmental design play a very important role uh, in the growth and development uh, for kids uh, with autism uh, spectrum disorder. So I think you're work is fascinating. I uh, enjoy looking at uh, the final design products. I read your thesis, but you know, uh, without those colored images of your final renderings and floor plans, it's you know, hard to kind of picture the final space. So good job there in describing or visually uh, uh, present your uh, design concept in a very effective way. Um, I do have a couple questions. Um, so the first question is, um, related to the topic uh, that you have identified as a cross-culture comparison in some way, which is, uh, you know, my research interest as well. So would you please elaborate a little bit more about how does culture play a role in the development of um, 
uh, kids with autism? And what is the role of family? And is there any difference in the teaching model? What is a typical teacher to child ratio uh, in those uh, uh, education centers? And how does that affect your design decision? So, uh, so what do you There is no like enough school for aut autistic children. They usually uh, go to school with people with, like with disability or into or difficulties intellectual difficulties. So uh, based on my research that I did, so they they cannot be or they not they cannot be studying with these students because they can understand it very well, but they need uh, appropriate environment to help or support their learning. So you identify the sort of the gap, uh, there's a need there because the current design or current, current model doesn't support that need very well. Um, but say, if you are designing for that culture, are there any specific things that will make the design unique? Uh, so for instance, uh, let me just use my own kind of research as an example. Uh, the Western modern hospital was introduced uh, into China uh, in uh, 1800s, um, but there, there has been a lot of adaptation that has to be done uh, to be culturally appropriate and fits the social cultural model. So I guess I'm wondering if there's any specific cultural elements uh, or social economic elements that you need to consider when you uh, adapt this model uh, from the United States uh, to a different culture, um, whether it's color palette, whether it's the spatial organization, um, uh, the spatial hierarchy, et cetera. Uh, is there anything or family structure, anything that uh, you might need to consider uh, in designing for that specific uh, context? Uh, the only thing that I would like to consider for the school in Saudi Arabia is privacy. So if the teachers or the staff are women, no men allowed to uh, come uh, inside the school. Mm -hmm. And same thing for the men, if the staff are all men, so no women allowed to enter the school, unless an emergency like issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, a, that's a very important uh, factor. So let me again ask you a related question. Are kids uh, in the mixed gender class or are kids also separate by gender? No, they're mixed like, if, because they're kids, so they're mixed until I would say 11 or 10 years old. Okay. So we'll be separated. Okay, that, that's a great point. Um, you know, these things I think you know, but it might be helpful to elaborate uh, in your thesis when you describe a design for a specific culture. Um, second question is related to your uh, survey. Uh, how how are, were your subjects recruited? It was an online survey. Uh, did you s disseminate the survey through an uh, uh, organization that has connection with families? Uh, with uh, children with uh, autism, or what, what is how what's the criteria for your survey subjects? Uh, it was online survey, and um, some of my friends and committee members helped me to uh, send it to like appropriate like uh, people that who has uh, awareness or like have anything that related to autistic children. Okay. So it's a convenient sampling. Uh, if, if that's the case, it might be also helpful to mention in your uh, methodology. Um, so when it comes to the selection of the case studies, I love uh, looking at the pictures that you have provided from the case study uh, and uh, also the interview from uh, the interior designer uh, for the clinic design. So. I wonder the selection of the 
uh, the other example, what is the selection criteria? How do you define the case study that you uh, study or investigate? Um, can you explain that a little bit more? Uh, so the criteria for the case studies, how do you define or select your case studies in this uh, thesis? So uh, I was looking for, I selected based on the design of what, of what uh, appropriate for children, uh, autistic children environments based on colors and uh, like lighting and materials and all of my like research agenda. Um, so it is a case study from Saudi Arabia, uh, actually a facility dedicated for autism uh, disorder, uh, a spectrum disorder uh, children, or is it uh, for a regular uh, educational facility for uh, general uh, population? Because you, you mentioned there's not many available facilities for uh, students with uh, autism. So I wonder where, what is that case study specifically about? Was it designed for that population or no? Yes, it was a design. Specifically for autism yes. uh, spectrum disorder. Okay, yeah. I, I, it's just the, you know, the way you describe the sound like there's nothing available, uh, but the case study was probably one of the few examples. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's currently available? Right. Okay, okay. Um, again, it's, it's probably just a matter of clarification uh, in your writing. Uh, I was wondering if that was a specific uh, facility for that purpose. Um, in terms of your design, can you go back to the slide that has your uh, floor plan? Yeah, this one. This is a great layout. Uh, I really appreciate the way you design uh, the space to have a central kind of core cafeteria and gym as activity uh, hub that bring everybody together, but uh, decentralize the classroom and each one has a dedicated uh, outdoor uh, playground uh, and uh, with full exposure and access to natural light. Uh, the way you organize space is really efficient uh, and the circulation is very, very effective. Uh, and uh, having the teacher's lounge also situated in the middle that allow quick accessibility to all the classrooms, uh, as well as the gym and the cafeteria space. So uh, in terms of the plan layout is really effective, love it. Uh, and then the design of the sensory room uh, is very uh, effective as well, it's not, uh, 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 over stimulation of too much uh, sensory uh, uh, stimulation going on. It's very controlled and also provided different choices uh, for uh, children. Um, and the location is quite effective as well. Uh, the only probably small suggestion I would like to make here is this sensory room is a little bit more accessible uh, for the classroom on the uh, on the left-hand side, but less so for the right-hand side. So I wonder if there could be a shortcut between say um, the cafeteria and gym, maybe perhaps here, so that to allow the kids on this side also have a quick access to sensory room if needed, right? So they don't have to kind of walk a long distance. But other than that, I thought the relationship, the functional adjacency uh, really make a lot of sense and, and clearly showed your understanding of the functional relationship among those spaces. Um, so one space that I, I don't know whether it's common uh, in the setting or it's necessary is an on-site uh, clinic. Um, a small exam room uh, just to be able to provide on-site uh, diagnosis and uh, perhaps some level of uh, intervention. Uh, I think in some uh, cases that I have encountered, they do have that on-site, um, but you know, depends on the, the code and guidelines. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, there might be a different requirement. So this is just something I would like to bring up for your consideration. 
Um, the other thing is uh, in the, um, can you go to one of the renderings? Would you like, uh, would you mind flip to, yeah, here, right here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, for the classroom. Um, again, I appreciate how much uh, sauce you have put into the uh, furniture, even the texture of the chairs and uh, the different uh, uh, kind of the zones that you have created uh, for uh, kids. And uh, the storage is also well considered the whole color palette. I really speak uh, uh, about your understanding of the, this type of educational space. Uh, uh, one, probably a small suggestion here is to provide choice. Uh, so right now, most of the tables are created for group learning. And as you probably know through your research for autism, um, for children with autism um, spectrum disorder, sometimes they get uh, over agitated and they might need to be, um, uh, they would prefer a, a more private space for their own learning to be able to disescalate and being able to uh, uh, adjust themselves. Uh, so create the room by offering different options uh, will help uh, address a different situation and scenarios and provide more support uh, for the students. Okay. Um, and then the... Uh, it's kind of a nitpicking thing is your title. <laughs> um, so I think your title is uh, the comparison of, um, let me see, what is your title again? Comparative analysis between schools uh, and Riyadh and uh, best uh, centers around the Right, the, the best autism centers around the world. I, I think I just have a little bit, uh, um, I think the, the way you describe the best autism centers around the world is quite subjective, uh, you know, because uh, what do you define as the best uh, autism center? Is that by awards uh, or is there any uh, ratings uh, that, that's provided by the industry? Uh, so it's kind of a, 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 it's a matter of wording, I think. Uh, you can mention as best practice, I think that's fine. But when you describe as the best autism centers around the world, it just uh, could be a little bit misleading. And also when you say around the world, I kind of expect some, something from, I don't know, Japan or you know, Europe. <laughs> uh, so it, it kind of is in indicating you're looking at more than just one uh, country or more than one uh, culture context. So it's just a matter of uh, maybe redefining your title a little bit to be uh, more accurately reflect what you have been working on for this particular thesis. Um, but other than that, I, I thought it was a, a very well developed uh, undergraduate uh, thesis. I was uh, amazed by how rigorous your process is. I think thanks to your advisors, uh, really well developed uh, for undergraduate uh, research and design uh, project. And I can clearly see how the research uh, was uh, uh, well translated into the design decision and the, certainly the design in the end benefited from the research that goes into us. Uh, so yeah, appreciate the opportunity for you inviting me to see this project. Thank you. Thank you. And, and now we'll open the floor up to this committee. trying to find my unmute button. <laughs> um, so I also thank you, Dr. Kai, to um, just sit and listen to your analysis of this is very interesting. You know, Asil and I have been working on this together along with Rachel for the past year. Um, so it's great to have a fresh set of eyes and someone with your level of expertise to sort of evaluate this from a, um, a healthcare standpoint and a research-based standpoint. Um, so I just a few things I see going through and, you know, we've worked on this presentation a lot. So a lot of this is, is familiar to me, but I think today you did a really nice job with, um, I have kind of little items where I've circled that you've, you've clearly taken the research and you've injected it into your design. And I just want to read those off to you as sort of validation of what, 
what you've done and, and sort of how you've presented it. So your, um, your questions and the answers that were given in your survey about sensory needs um, and needs for um, sort of calming or um, sort of reasonable transitions, I thought was well adapted. Um, you know, your color as wayfinding, utilizing natural um, and neutral uh, materials as well as natural light sources, um, you know, large windows that you had integrated. I think the, um, the stimulation corridor was a highlight for me. It was very, very clever. Um, I think you took a lot of what was shown in, in the case study in your interview with Carly, um, and again, sort of injected it into your design and came up with your own sort of representation of what that would look like. Um, I would agree with Dr. Tsai that the outdoor spaces was so important. Um, and for those who weren't with the SEAL in the beginning, that was something that developed throughout the research. Those were just kind of blank corners um, of the building. And as she continued to research it, and we said, you know, expand upon the space, how can you integrate this into the program? Um, there was also discussion about the floor plan itself being kind of modular. If this were something that wanted to develop or grow, as a puzzle piece, it's inherently modular. So it could be something that could be expanded upon. Um, so I thought all of that was wonderful. I wrote corridor, clever, love it. The sensory room was very dreamy and kind of fantastical. Um, you know, I think you really found a subtlety between presenting the three main points um, without like throwing everything at it and seeing what would stick. I thought you were very selective with how you presented um, your findings. And then um, again, just for those on the call, there were a couple of questions that Dr. Tai had um, with regards to family structure design for culture. Uh, Asil and I did discuss, and she had mentioned it sort of the segregation between men and women at certain ages. When we looked at the original floor plan, we were talking about code requirements for um, toilet rooms, lavatories, um, male versus female. And so we had a long in-depth conversation about what that could potentially look like depending on the cultural requirements. Um, so that, that was definitely something that I think, you know, you highlighted Dr. Tai and, um, you know, a seal maybe moving forward to, to include some more of that, I think would be um, of value. Um, you know, we, you, you did touch upon it and I think there was an understanding there. Um, and then also, and something that I know, but maybe could be included a little bit more, whether in the presentation of the thesis is that this, um, this topic came as a result of a family member. If it's okay to share a seal, that you have a family member who, um, you know, has, has experienced maybe some of this, um, the challenges in learning. And so this is a personal topic as well, which I think is often a really important reason to devote time and energy to researching and to try to make changes. So I applaud you for that. Um, so that is it for me. I think you did a fabulous job. It's been great to work with you. Thank you. It was a great to work with you too. I'm very as well. So I was so excited to see the final project um, and the final results. Uh, the last time um, Asael and I touched base, um, there were um, a few renderings that weren't ready, um, including the sensory room. So I was very excited to see it um, and I love it. And here's why I love the sensory room. I love the sensory space because it is not red, yellow, and blue and green. Uh, it is, it, that is for me, those sort of elementary primary colors are my pet peeve when it comes to um, special education and therapeutic design um, for two reasons. First of all, people with autism are not all children and no one stays a child. Um, you know, those sorts of colors are not, you know, conducive to calm, first of all, but also to, you know, an, an acknowledgement um, that um, most people with autism are not children. And so um, that's a piece of it, even though this is an elementary classroom. And the other thing that really, um, Kind of hit me over the head as I was looking at this essay is that 
one of the things that you and I talked about when you came over to visit Autism Up is that that um, the two sort of the twofold purpose for using a more neutral natural color palette. One was what I just talked about, but the other was um, that people with autism have a very difficult time with what's called generalization. They can learn something in one space and place, um, and then they're not very good at generalizing that into another setting. So for example, they might learn how to make a sandwich at home, um, but if they're presented with that same task at school, they may not be able to do that um, with the same success. So making sure that the settings itself um, looks as similar to real life as possible um, is really important. Um, also the reason why I never liked that those little plastic kitchens for your little kids are pink and purple and red and blue. Um, that's not what kitchens look like. <laughs> so um, it makes it's, it's even more important for this population, these students um, to be able to experience their learning in that authentic environment. Um, so I really appreciated the design of the sensory space um, since that was um, a new slide for me. Um, and I also um, feel like I would like to commission the, that hallway um, and have that built, I don't know, in my living room um, or something. Um, but I, you really embraced the idea, I think, of letting people be themselves. And you know, when you think about school, you think about a lot of rules, right? Don't do this, sit here, you know, fix that, do this assignment right here and now. And I think that your design um, almost guarantees that that's not going to happen. Um, the students are invited to touch things in the hallway. Um, they're invited to move throughout the building and to go where they need to go and want to go. They're invited to go outside as a part of their day um, and to sit in various locations. So I think that's really important. Um, I would echo what was said before about the group versus individual space. I think you've done a stunning job with the overall design of the building itself. Um, and I think, um, you know, you're not a teacher. So um, not knowing um, sort of how, you know, how teachers work and how classrooms work on a moment to moment basis, um, it, especially special education classrooms, it would be difficult for you to know what sort of some of those different options for getting your work done in class would be. Um, we did talk about that briefly last week, but, uh, you know, as has been mentioned, all of the places to sit are, are in groups. And um, lots of kids, I guess any kiddo, um, sometimes likes to be in a group and sometimes um, likes to or needs to get things done individually. Um, I think the places and spaces are large enough to accommodate different kinds of seating and study options. Um, and I, I, your attention to detail um, really, I think just, it, you. It's just very apparent to me that you sort of sucked in everything we were telling you um, and then put it into this presentation. Um, I really like it and would like to build a couple of these classrooms right outside the ones we have in our building. So <laughs> well done, really well done. Thank you. Okay, we have a couple more minutes. Dr. Tai, did you have any more questions that you would like to ask? It's not necessarily a question, it's more of a comment. I really uh, enjoy seeing the model that you guys are developing by engaging the industry um, leaders and designers, as well as uh, healthcare practitioners and educators into this process uh, to help your student develop a project. I, I think the process is really effective and uh, I can clearly see uh, how, how much student can learn and grow in this process. So I, I just want to make that comment about the, the model of learning that uh, I'm really kind of appreciating here. Yeah. Thank you so much. I, I personally appreciate your feedback on that. Uh, I know that the students have worked exceptionally hard through the process and 
um, it is uh, the entire process for them was also quite new um, in engaging in research at this level and conducting mm -hmm. their own research. So it was definitely a stretch. And uh, I think, you know, like our student Nasil here, she rose to the occasion. So it's been uh, really wonderful. And we've just been blessed with having amazing alumni like Courtney and our community partners like Rachel that uh, and people really from all over the world that have been joining us to support the students and the students took the initiative to seek out these folks on their own. And that was really, I think a tremendous professional benefit and, and speaks well to their confidence. So thank you very much for that feedback. I appreciate that personally. Yeah. Okay, so I think we are all set then. So congratulations Asil on completing your capstone. Congratulations. <laughs> you can breathe now. <laughs> <laughs> a big exhale. Yes. Okay. So uh, we, I would also, again, like to extend a sincere thank you to Dr. Tai and our committee members for their valuable feedback. We're indebted to all of you for your thoughtful cross-examination of our students' work. And I'd also like to thank William, who's behind the scenes as our moderator, helping out with technical issues. Um, and we wanna also thank our audience for their attention and support of our student. So at this time, the committee and the examining scholar will now enter a breakout room for deliberations. And this completes the final oral defense for Asiel Tasha. You are all welcome to stay on for the next presentation. Thank you all for attending and have a great afternoon.